Welcome to Valleluc University Global Program, which aims to disseminate information about research, teaching and learning, and other scholarly issues. We invite top scholars, both from Thailand and from other countries, particularly those scholars who visit Valleluc University to appear on this program, to share their research, to share their expertise. And today, uh, we are very fortunate to have a very distinguished professor from University of Malaya, uh, Professor Johnson Alangaram. Welcome to the program, Professor. Uh, professor Alangaram has a long list of achievements. He is a very distinguished professor at the School of Engineering, at the Faculty of Engineering. He is currently the director of the Center for Innovative Construction Technology and he is also recognized as one of the top 2% world scientists by Stanford University, as uh, shown by Elsevier Data Repository. And he is very well known across many countries, both in Europe European countries and in Asian countries. One of the things that Professor uh, Johnson Alankaram has done is to be examiners of uh, doctoral thesis of PhD students from other countries, uh, which is a great contribution to uh, the young academics. So again, welcome to the program, Professor, and uh, uh, we are very happy to have you, a distinguished professor from U of Malaya, one of the top universities in Asia, in the world, indeed. So first of all, can you, can you outline very briefly uh, your purpose of visiting Valleluc University. Good morning, uh, Vice President, and thank you to Valleluc University for this opportunity for me. It's a, indeed a honor for me to be here today with the, the high, one of the highest officials, Vice President, and I would like to thank your President and also other academic staff for giving me the opportunity. When Dr. Tan Kok visited uh, University of Malaya, to have a forge a network between University of Malaya and Valenak University, it gave me an opportunity. And he invited me to be here today to have a kind of research collaboration and networking. And uh, that motivated me. And you are uh, head of the dean of the School of Engineering and Technology, Dr. Montian, also encouraged me to visit here to give a lecture on international research networking, funding, and how to enhance the local research at this Valleluc University. And uh, apart from that, I've been an examiner for the PhD candidates, also funding evaluator in different countries in um, South America, uh, Europe, and India, or other Asian countries. Also the promotional exercise, I've been the evaluator for promotional exercise to become associate mm -hmm. professor or professors. Uh, I've, been, I've been given the honor to evaluate. In addition, I've also been invited by France, China, uh, India, and other countries, Vietnam, to go and give uh, expert lectures, keynote lectures in international conferences. I believe Valleluc University has the vision and mission to become the number one university in Thailand. When I had a short interaction with the president, honorable president of Valleluc University, I was so impressed the vision of this university to become number one in Thailand and also be one of the global leaders in, in Asia. And that gave me an opportunity not only to forge alliance between University of Malaya and uh, Valelak, but also I would like to introduce few universities from France, China, India, other European mm -hmm. countries whom I know, mm -hmm. so that you can have more network in the future. Thank you indeed for your encouragement, and we are working very hard here uh, to, uh, to be better <laughs> than we are now. Uh, and now, come back to your, your research area. You, you've been working on, uh, on the uh, sustainable or green, low-carbon concrete materials. And this is very 
uh, important issues across the globe, really. So uh, I'd like you to say a little bit about the current situation of, uh, of the research in this area. Why is it such a very important area uh, for a number of researchers across many countries to work together uh, you know, to, on, on this very issue? So, so what is the situation of the uh, of, of this, uh, you know, areas. In other words, of the high carbon. <laughs> in other words, why do you have to uh, to get together and, and research on low carbon? Uh, or I mean, uh, has this contributed to the emission of uh, CO2? Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, to to a very uh, dangerous level. Or what what led to to this group of researchers to focus on this? Thank you, Vice President. This is a very important mm -hmm. question. Today's research globally focuses on sustainable construction. Mm. We have to start with one step for in, at once. Mm. We cannot change the global perspective in one day or mm. one year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It takes years. We researched on sustainable materials for over 15 years. The outcome of the research has to be established, exemplified through outputs. We cannot confine our research into a laboratory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I visited your laboratory, I saw some kind of benches, green benches, eight benches yesterday I saw. That is the research output. So in University of Malaya, we were encouraged to have sustainable construction and sustainable materials in the form of industrial collaboration, or international networking, and dissemination of this construction materials in the form of houses or building products to the consumers, to the stakeholders. So what we have done is we were challenged to construct houses within the campus mm -hmm. for school students, for bus drivers. One of the outcomes of our projects is cement-free house. And free house. For bus drivers. Mm. Like yesterday when I visited Dr. Tanso Cox's uh, project, it's, it's a green material, recycled concrete and uh, badminton fibers as uh, sustainable materials within Valailak University campus. Eight locations, the benches are established. That one serves community reach. We are reaching to the community to show that our projects are sustainable and uh, considered by the people, we need to educate. One of the things is we need to educate the public. The research is not confined to the laboratory, not only to the stakeholders, but the common public. For example, bus drivers, when we constructed the house, cement-free house, and handed over to them today, they enjoy the house. And one thing they pointed out to us, thermal comfort. Within the house, whenever they enter in the, into the house, they say this is thermally comfort. That means the heat from the outside doesn't go into this like the normal construction. So when we used the locally available sustainable materials from palm oil industry, from iron industry, from coal operated power plants, these are some of the materials which are available in plenty in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Nigeria, Ecuador, all the tropical countries, palm oil wastes mm -hmm. are available. Iron wastes are available. These uh, coal-operated power plant wastes are available. There are many other plentiful, like incinerated ash from the municipal waste. They incinerate. Mm -hmm. That ash can be used. So there are plenty of full materials available. Mm -hmm we did construct that house. Mm. Secondly, also we constructed using low carbon footprint materials. One of the questions asked by Honorable Vice President is on how, why, where, when? This high carbon, how does it affect? It affects us directly because of the high carbon dioxide emission due to cement consumption. Cement and concrete industry contributes about 
10% of the glo global CO2 emission. 10%. 10%. Mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it may not look high, but it's a dangerous. Because the second most used material in the world after water is concrete. Water is the first most used material, but the concrete is the second most used material globally. Each person consumes a certain amount of concrete. Housing, mm -hmm. roads, infrastructure, stadiums, airfield, everywhere concrete. Therefore, in order to reduce the cement consumption, many researchers, companies, uh, engineers involved in low carbon footprint materials. So when we constructed the house without cement, we used locally available, non-traditional materials, some of them non-traditional, some are traditional, but they are not cement. Thereby, we showcase to the world, we can build a house using locally available mm. materials. This is very exciting. And, uh, Hypothetically speaking, what would you say uh, the, I'm interested in the replacement of concrete, you know, let's say high carbon uh, concrete materials. So uh, with this alternative green uh, materials and, and with the congregations of researchers to work on this thing, um, what is the percentage of the contribution of this non-high carbon concrete materials that have already been uh, used by you know, people around the world. So, so what, what would you say uh, in, in terms of uh, right now, like, you know, 10 percent. Okay. Yeah, you know, so is this being reduced and to what extent? Yeah, it's quite, uh, it's a very important question, even though we cannot directly give an answer to that mm. question. It's a very, mm. very significant question. Mm. We need to research because, take for Europe. In Europe, all the European Union countries, they do have a database. How many tons of waste collected? How many tons incinerated? Mm. How many tons of waste they reused, recycled? Mm -hmm. For instance, in Asia, we don't have a database. Mm -hmm. In, even in Thailand, if we talk about the waste, how many tons of waste collected a day, mm -hmm. what are the wastes available, where is the database, sometimes we may not get it. So we need to get the database, then how many tons are recycled, then we will get an answer for that. Mm -hmm. However, to say to that, probably uh, 3 to 5 percent, probably, or 10 percent, mm -hmm. probably certain countries have recycled and used. Some countries, in developed countries, probably it can go up to 20 percent mm -hmm. of the materials recycled. They can reduce the carbon footprint. If we use this cement-free concrete, according to researchers, up to 30 percent reduction can be possible. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how advanced is this research? Mm -hmm. uh, Given a scale from one to ten, what what you, would you say in terms of that advancement of uh, this area of research? In fact, it should be somewhere between seven to eight because wow. of the 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 we the amount of uh, research involved, mm -hmm. the quantification, especially in terms of materials, in terms of advancements, in terms of strength and durability. Mm -hmm. This I call geopolymer or alkali activated materials, which is cement free. We can make it cement free, can come up to even eight in the range mm -hmm. of eight, mm -hmm. seven to eight. Right. And the level of commercialization, what would you say about, uh, has this been uh, well commercialized, the research in this area or still, uh, you know, in the form of papers and, you know, conferences, papers and all of that, or is it already been very uh, widely commercialized? Yeah, it's a very important aspect question. Uh, as for the conferences, dissemination of information through seminar, workshop, conferences, well done over the last 20 over years, mm -hmm. especially on recycled materials, sustainable cement-based materials, or fine aggregates replacement. There have been so many researchers or researchers involved in this, and that has brought immense benefits. However, to the stakeholders, common public, this has not reached. Mm -hmm. Common person. If you ask those who are in the in a village, where they produce the waste, some of the waste, 
they have not been informed that these waste materials, they can use it for their own house construction. Mm. So our aim is to reach to the villages, mm -hmm. whereby we can inform those villagers, the waste are available within your vicinity, within your reach, mm. you can convert those into your building materials. So to disseminate or commercialize, your another question is on commercialization. In European countries, recycled materials, commercialization is quite extensive. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Asia, it is not so. Why? Why? One so? of the reasons, very good question, why? Because complacency. Mm -hmm. We are complacent. Say in Malaysia, you open the tap, you get water. <laughs> you switch on, you get the electricity. Everything is available. But when we think of the next generation, our children and grandchildren, there comes the danger of our complacency. Mm -hmm. Because we have the plentiful of resources, natural resources, but we wouldn't leave those resources for our mm -hmm. children and grandchildren. That is where we need to inculcate this knowledge to the next level mm -hmm. of school children. We reach to school children, we go to the schools, we reach out to them online, tell them how significant, important to have sustainable construction mm. for the roads, for mm. payments, for houses, mm. for infrastructure. So reaching out to the community is the key for our future success so that many researchers will come out and they will be knowing the availability of resources within their vicinity, mm. within their reach. They can utilize it. That is why I mentioned in the beginning, we cannot change the world overnight. Rather, if we teach those children or this, the young generation about the availability of materials, how they can transform that into a product, products, build, building blocks, bricks, or precast elements, they can do wonders. Mm. So yeah, reaching out. Right, of course, uh, I, I agree that uh, human lives uh, can't exist without uh, construction, without you know <laughs> some kind of construction, really uh, houses, uh, roads, and, and all of that. Uh, and uh, I, I can see the vibrancy of the projects, uh, internationally collaborated projects, and all of that. Uh, so, uh, can I ask a little bit about your collaboration with Wale Lak University on this very particular area of research? Yeah, this is that. And is, whether we have enough people. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say my very purpose here after I met uh, Dr. Tang So Kong in University Malaya, mm -hmm. he came for to another university called Monash University Malaysia campus. But because of his interest and his interaction with many researchers, I was introduced to him by Dr. Shan from Monash University, head of school. Then that paved me and uh, that gave me an opportunity to come here. Through this initiative, today's uh, initiative, I would foresee a long lasting collaboration between us. It's not going to be between me and Dr. Tan Sokong. I saw your lab facility yesterday. Mm -hmm. He took me around mm -hmm. your laboratory. Extensive work is ongoing. Mm -hmm. You have excellent facility. You have, you have the people, I saw them literally. So there is a possibility to work on sustainable construction, sustainable building materials, and exemplification or demonstration of such elements to the public. Especially in South Thailand, the university is located in geographically very important area, South Thailand you have an interaction to Malaysia very nearby, thereby there is a possibility of working together mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, the research outputs can reach to the public. So one of the purposes of my visit is to have a network to interact with your civil engineering group and also introduce my university to your other faculties, medicine, uh, arts, mm -hmm. creative arts, ICT, and uh, faculty of built environment, architecture, so many faculties. Mm -hmm. We have 30,000 mm -hmm. students in University of Malaya. Oh. Out of that, around 12 to 15,000 are graduate students mm -hmm. pursuing PhD and master's. So we have our students from 90 over countries. So we want to have 
our students to come here to uh, enhance their skills. At the same time, we would like to invite your students to go to our University of Malaya to have the right. interaction. And obviously, out of those, uh, out of those 12,000 plus uh, postgraduate students, some of them must be working in your area. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, in the uh, research area. So, yes. so it's very encouraging, uh, really. I just like to, uh, because we mentioned University of Malaysia, Malaya is one of the top university in the world in Asia. Um, so I'm just wondering, and your graduate students, postgraduate students, numbers uh, is quite large actually. Uh, so, what is the situation of? Uh, tertiary education in Malaysia these days. Yeah. Uh, you feel that um, you, know, you are under some kind of pressure or uh, you know, it's, it's working really well, uh, everybody at universities uh, are growing or... Because I mean, in Western, many Western countries these days, although they are, they are still top researchers, but uh, when it comes to students' enrollment, uh, Western countries seem to have a major problem. I'm not sure what the situation in Malaysia. <laughs> uh, so far in Malaysia, the tertiary education is, is booming. Mm -hmm. uh, Malaysia is one of the top destinations uh, for the international students. Mm -hmm. We get students from Asia, mm -hmm. from Middle East, from some from even come from as far as America and uh, South America, some mm -hmm. of the students. Mm -hmm. They choose uh, Singapore and Malaysia as mm -hmm. one of the top destinations. Mm -hmm. Malaysia in um, this University of Malaya is number one, as Vice President pointed out. Our university is the number one in Malaysia. QS ranked 60th. We are 60th QS mm -hmm. world ranking mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. in 2025. Right. Currently in 2024, 65th ranked university. And uh, Many students come to our university because of one of the uh, one of the reasons is a ranking, mm -hmm. and the enrollment student enrollment mm -hmm. still uh, it's it's not worrisome. Mm -hmm. it's, there are students, mm -hmm. but there is more interest towards in Asia to nowadays towards IT. Mm -hmm. It's last twenty over the years, right. same thing, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there is a slight concern for the student taking we call STEM S T E M. Yeah science, technology, engineering, maths, that is slightly going down. Mm -hmm. We need to take some measures to enhance the enrollment. Right. Uh, Professor, interesting you talk about the, uh, the significance, the importance of uh, ranking, world ranking of a university. It is very interesting because we are now in our uh, third year, that we have the third time that we have been ranked uh, so we certainly have a lot to work on and we have to do a lot of catching up. Uh, can, you, can you be, uh, I'd like to hear more about the significance of university, uh, you know, world university ranking and the fact that we have to, to get on this uh, ranking ladder uh, in order, to, in order to, to really attract, you know, talents and, and all of that, you know. How is that situation broadly uh, in Malaysia? Yeah, very significant question, Vice President. I am so honored to hear such uh, important uh, desire mm -hmm. from you. So i like to quote an example. One of the students asked me to come uh, to join under my research supervision. Then I asked him, why do you choose University of Malaya? He said he got one of the universities in the UK, United Kingdom. But he preferred University of Malaya because University of Malaya is higher ranked than the UK universities, mm -hmm. one of the universities uh -huh. he chose. Uh -huh. right. Ours is 60 or in the top 100. Mm -hmm. The university he got in the UK was about 100. So university ranking is quite significant and every university should take efforts to fulfill the criteria. Mm -hmm. There are quite a number of criteria by times, by QS mm -hmm. ranking, or mm -hmm. the other ranking bodies. They mm -hmm. do have criteria. Right. So to fulfill some of the criteria, one of the criteria is academic excellence, international networking, research collaboration, the student staff ratio, and the facilities. There are so many, and employment <coughs> aspect of the students once they graduate. So our university, is one of the things is one other important aspect I forgot is research publication, publication. citations. So our university encourages each lecturer to have 
depending on their categories, senior lecturers, associate professors, professors, senior professors, to have certain number of... What is the minimum? <laughs> For example, I'm a professor. Uh. I need to have three to five Web of Science Q1 or Q2 publications. Top ranked right. journals, high impact journals. Right. Scopus is considered in our university, right. but not five per five per year. Per year. <laughs> per year, one year, I have to publish three to five articles under Web of Science. We call SCIE publication, not Scopus. Mm -hmm. Scopus is considered, but not given the points. For example, we have to be corresponding authors. Mm -hmm. Corresponding authors of our book chapters or publication of books, research articles, international funding, and networking, start student ratios. There are so many aspects. For example, the students evaluate us. How do we perform academic excellence? This is also considered one of the outputs. Mm -hmm. So I would I foresee president of Valailak University has a, such a vision and mission. I heard from Dr. Thang Sokok when he visited our university. One of the reasons that forced me to come here because of your president's vision and mission. To promote international research collaboration. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's why I am here yeah, today. Yeah. Any further advice on that? We have just started and, and we is working very well now. Uh, this, uh, you know, attempts to promote uh, international research collaboration we have some money, but hopefully we have more in the future. But, uh, you know, uh, I would, uh, would you offer any ad advice on, on that? Yeah, thank you, sir, for asking. I would like to say, humbly say, we have a matching grant. We call matching grant. Say, for instance, uh, Valelak University pays a, a lecturer a certain amount, 50%. Mm. Other side, similar amount will be granted from University Malaya. For instance, say, let's say you start, you, you pay your academic staff, let's say 20,000 USD. Our university will say, okay, we don't have 20,000, we will give you 10,000 USD. Mm -hmm. So you also match 10,000 USD, mm -hmm. it's called matching grant. Right. Thereby, the staff from Valelak University will have the privilege to publish in high impact journal in collaboration with our lecturers, academics. Mm -hmm. That is going to be one of the greatest success in Valilak University. And, and, yeah, and that's exactly what your Balaya has done over the years, okay. right? Yes, yeah. we have done. Mm -hmm. We have collaborated with many universities with a matching grant. Mm -hmm. In addition, we also join the international grant applications mm -hmm. with your academic staff as our collaborators. That will enhance the publications. Right. right. Certain publications. Your lecturers, uh, the Valelak University academics will be the first authors when they contribute. Mm. And they can be corresponding authors. Our University Malaya, when they contribute, they will be corresponding authors. This works win-win for both yes. universities. Yes. So I would yeah. humbly say, we start with small matching grants and also international grants. Or your, your lecturers can visit our university, stay there for three months and uh, work on projects. Right. And while you are here, Professor, okay. you'll be giving uh, some uh, a number of seminars and workshops and all of that. Um, what are they on? Yeah, I would like to uh, exemplify our research, what is going on, especially, say, we have worked with the UK University, international collaboration. So UK, France, China, India, and some other European countries. So how do we interact with those? What are the requirements? How do we get research funding from overseas? Mm -hmm. So one of my lectures will focus on today, in fact, on this today, very day, mm -hmm. afternoon. I'm going to interact with the academics from School of Engineering and Technology. Mm -hmm. I will give them some hints. How do we get international funding? How do we get uh, interact with the overseas researchers? How, what are the requirements? So that's one thing. Then publication. How do we work together to have a joint publications? And how do we have exchange between us, staff and student exchange? These are some of the areas. Plus, I'm also going to share our demonstration project, cement-free house construction, right. then another sustainable house construction, and so on. Okay. With that, Professor, we uh, 
uh, we, we, we are running out of time, and I'm very honored indeed to have this opportunity to talk to uh, such a very highly regarded professor, uh, you know, from Europe, one of the top universities in the world. Uh, so thank you again for being on the program. Uh, thank you so much for coming to Lelak University to, uh, to talk to our academics and our students. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I would like to also express my deepest appreciation to Vice President and your President and your academic staff, Dr. Thong So Kok and Dr. Montian, for having me here today. I'm so honored. Thank you. Thank Wish you. you the best. Thank you. Thank you.